Chapter 1. Blending in 600 years has passed since the disappearance of Sedson. A young man with urges and dreams. Not much was said about what happened to the boy. But one thing is for sure. The earth has been poisoned with Cabrian artifacts. If in the wrong hands, or worse, a human, they are destined to reach out for what is not supposed to be seen. One of these unseen caretakers of this natural habitat is Perisuka, an overseer who is tasked to find and report back to Terrahipt. Like Sedson's Dutvutanian trousers, Perizuka has found an awful amount of relics that somehow is scattered around in the West. The age of pirates has begun, and posh colonials grabbing everything that they can get their grubby little hands on. Looking far and wide for something remotely looking black and green, Pirizuka lurked low and hidden between the western islands. She was not really good at gaining information from the humans either due to her Thillian speech, which is mostly consistent of sniffs and squeaks. Thillians, however, do live for an indefinite time, growing, learning and using their experience to teach the young. Pirizuka is uh, about 50 years old. But with a Thillian body that never ages, she has no problem appearing sweet and attractive to the young humans and giving her wise words. Snee, snively, sniv. She can smell stupidity from a mile away. Cruising along the waters in her Zersek, she looks down and scans for any floating debris. Battles have been fought on Earth between the celestial and the unknown. Dutvutanians are very elusive. Smiling in the dark with their big and beautiful green eyes, she has spent a good ten years searching the West. Somehow, she mistakes a green plant for a Dutvutanian. She walked up to the overseer tower on her Zerzek. She have no friends, no partners who works in her field, only the computer, giving vague answers. She has thought of ending it all from this madness, but Thillian's skin cannot get harmed by sharp objects. It just stiffens up and turns into hard leather the moment it gets damaged. She needs another Thillian, or even a Hipgen. The dark lines around the eyes of a Thillian are vestigial features from when they were once gods of the earth. The antennas that extend out from the crevices behind their ears are now long gone, but the ability to sense another Thillian was still there. Pirizuka climbed down from her tower and sat down on the wide platform at the front of her zerzek. She meditated, taking in every natural sound surrounding her. The wind, the animals, the billowing of the waters, and even the subtle murmurs of the terrain. Rocks falling, cliffs scraping. She sat there for a very long time. She was one with the earth. There even was some humans who walked up to her floating rock of a home. They whispered sweet nothings. She tried to not get distracted by the fact that she was sitting out in the open like a total fool. <laughs> time went by. Years, even. The floating rock she was on now had wooden supports by the humans who seemed to worship her, but then her right eye snapped open, the dark edges of her eye tingled, her head slowly turned towards an island. She stood up quickly, but where was her clothes? She was now in a completely different garment. She looked around and saw humans with gifts and flowers. There was even a child in front of her. It wanted to give her a hug, but her job is to not interact in any way with the humans. So she pushed them off. And she took the child and placed it in the arm of the nearest person. She climbed back to her tower, which was covered in religious tripe. She steered her zerzek towards that island of which she sensed something from, and then she blasted off with great force, toppling over all of the structures that lined her zerzek. Over the sea she boomed. The island was coming closer. And upon closer inspection, there was colonial ships and a large port. She stopped her zerzek and then swiftly went to the right towards the uninhabited parts at the rear of the island. She gently drove her zerzek in among the trees and landed it down inside the forest. She got rid of her bright and colorful clothes and took out a new pair of clothes, but they seemed to have become worn over time. Their seams were tearing and the fabric could be easily punctured. She needed a good way to blend in. She looked outside her zerzek for anything. She was completely naked. But due to how clean colonial humans keep their infrastructure, a thin coating of clay would do just fine. 